Hi everybody, my name is Tiger Shu, and I'm with Pacific Rim Video here at the Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival. And we're with one of the wonderful filmmakers here, Corey Tong, is that correct? Yeah. So you've got a film, uh, Forever Chinatown, premiering tonight, and can you tell us a little about that? Absolutely. The film is about an 82-year-old Chinese-American artist who lives in San Francisco. And the film is really about the artist, but his work is extraordinary. He makes miniature models of his memories. And they are realist models that are that have this extraordinary quality of of being in the room, and every last detail is there from his the the names on the Chinese laundry, uh, the the clients, customers waiting to pick up their laundry, to all of the goods that are on his grandmother's kitchen cupboard, to the dough that's being made into mooncakes. And so he's made seven extraordinary miniature models of his memories growing up in 1930s and 40s San Francisco Chinatown. He has made them over the course of 30 years, all simultaneously. And the film is really, we hope, ultimately about an artist, his artwork, but really about the world and the community that he has created and that he's documented. He's basically taking a look at all of the places and the rooms that he lived in in San Francisco Chinatown as a kid and he's brought them to three-dimensional life through these miniature models and what he himself has shared with us is that his models are half wishing and half memory and it revealed to us and it made us really think about how people everywhere how they decide to capture their own or remember their own lives and what they decide to share with others because these models when looking at them very closely are very unusual and very unique worlds that he has created and on one level they're very specific to his own life his grandmother's kitchen the the chinese new year banquet that his family used to have the shoeshine stand the Chinese laundry, the herb shop where he used to hang out. Chinese but, ginseng. yeah, absolutely. And he actually has small herbs that are in yeah. each jar. It, it's, it's amazing what he has created. But what is also interesting is while the film and the artwork that we're capturing in the artist and the neighborhood is very specific to, to San Francisco Chinatown, what we have found in taking the film all over the world is that people who are not necessarily from a Chinatown community or who may not even be Chinese American will really look at these these pieces and they really start remembering their own lives, where they came from, their own memories and the bigger question that James, the director, and I um, as producers are, are asking the world is what is the legacy that you are creating for yourself and what are you leaving behind when you leave the earth? Well, I think a lot of our audience can definitely relate to the juxtaposition of keeping the old with the new, uh, but you know, one thing we, I think a lot of our audience would like to know too is, how did you find this man? How did you decide to make a film about it? What, did you just see him at like Legoland and then just saw him making some stuff? I mean, how did this, how did this happen? Well, it's a, it's a, that in itself is a film. Yeah. It, the, the actual model artwork are housed in the permanent collection of the Chinese Historical Society Museum in San Francisco. And a friend of ours, a friend of James and mine, called James and said, hey, you should come and look at these, this, these pieces. They're really amazing. And none of us had heard about them before. And so James first went and he saw the miniatures and he was blown away by their authenticity and their, their, the, what, what they evoked for him. And then James met with the artist, this guy Frank, who um, is a real character, he's, he's camera ready. And we, then he called me and he said, Corey, you should come and take a look at these miniatures because they're so extremely visual and they're so dramatic and dynamic that we, let's consider making something about it. So I went and uh, looked at them and they were very, very elaborate, very unique. 
partly because of the culture that they captured, but also just the, their international quality pieces of artwork that had not been discovered before. I mean, they had been discovered. They were in the museum, but nobody knew about them. No one, you know, they weren't given the level of prominence that they deserve. And so James and I developed a couple of proposals. We pitched it out to various television and film entities. Uh, many were very interested, and so we formed a wonderful partnership between uh, public television, ITVS, CAM, the Center for Asian American Media, California Humanities, PBS, the World Channel, and we started putting the package together. We started shooting, and we got to know Frank. And as we got to know Frank, as you will see in the film, when you see the film, we realized that Frank shares, he's very effusive, and he shares a lot about his life to a certain point. And then he withdraws. So what we found was even more fascinating. As we started shooting, and it took about three years to shoot the film, we realized that the artwork were really the manifestations of his personality. So all of the, whether it's the secrets, the painful things, the joyous things, they're all in, they're embodied in the miniatures. And that... Art imitating life. Art yep, imitating absolutely. Life. And, and as he describes to us, these pieces are half wishing and half memory. And when we reflect on that for ourselves, I think we all, to some extent, do that what we decide to share with the world, what do we put out there for others to, to know about us, and what do we embellish, what do we hide. It's very amazing. Corey, you, you hit me right in the feels. I, I thought we were going to hear talk about like a Chinese diorama, and now I'm all, oof, head explode. Well, uh, you know, wrapping up here, can I ask real quick, uh, so where's this film going to go? How can we follow? Is there a Tumblr where we can look at the pictures? You can find us on foreverchinatown.com, simple. That's our website. From there, you can go on. You can reach us on Facebook, Forever Chinatown. You can find us all over. It's going to be on the World Channel and PBS over the summer. We will be all over uh, American U.S. television coming up in a few months. And then we will be available through educational distribution. We're taking this out to classrooms and universities, museums. We are hoping to take the artwork and the film itself on a tour around the world to different museums. And part of it is really to give audiences not just a very specific and look at one particular culture, one really amazing neighborhood of San Francisco Chinatown and an artist who has captured that, but we really hope it makes people think about what, how do they capture? How do we pass on our memories to others? What stories do we tell? Whether it's our kids, our friends, our families, our partners. Or in your film. Yep. And so we hope that it really brings those questions up to people and that they will leave thinking, well, what will we leave behind when we leave the earth? And I forgot to add, he wants to burn them when he's gone. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. He yeah. wants to burn them um, and cremate them and take them with him into his afterlife. So you'll have to see the film in order to find out if he is actually uh, thinking of doing that or how he has proceeded with keeping these this life. Maybe you will have to see the film. Well, you know what, guys? So it's going down in Forever Chinatown. Make sure you catch that film. And thank you very much, Corey. Thanks so much. Have thank a great you, day. Tiger. Thank you. Memories get fuzzy and get more beautiful as years go by.